I built a fully functional seven segment display clock in No Man's Sky. And today I want to show you how. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to No Man's Sky. I got a bit sidetracked and after I played around with all the you nodes, know, the switches and, and all the logic circuits that you can build in No Man's Sky, and I thought, you know what? I should be able to build a clock. That can't be that hard. About 20 to 30 hours of gameplay later, here it is. Fully working and uh, it's a thing of beauty. I just want to take you on a tour. So I want to show you around so you can see how it works. I just want to give you a quick overview of the circuits that, that's running this thing that's it this is the circuit that's running it at least the front section and here's a isolation layer in between uh, the circuit and the display up there but but i'm gonna go through it i'm gonna show you some examples so you can kind of go and and if you want to play around with this yourself i want to start out with the display i've built the display as you can see just out of these light up cubes where you could just send power to them but instead of sending power to each individual ones, they are just, as you can see here, like connected into groups. And they are connected into seven groups, and this is what's called the seven segment display. This is just, you know, these numbers, you've seen them everywhere, like these old digital display numbers where they're just seven segments, three in the middle and, um, and four out on the side. And I just use those by sending power to the different nodes there um, to just light up each segment. And that means, Basically what happens is this layer out here calculates which number each display should be and then it sends a, a signal in to one of the circuits. Each of these circuits, uh, there, as you can see this is number one is here, number two is there, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see how it runs through. There's eight, there's nine, and there's zero. And so these are these circuits here just means when that circuit there gets the signal, it then displays that number on that given display. Um, Pretty straightforward stuff. There's one little thing extra I, uh, I want to show you. And that is in front of each digit, I've set a little button here. And what this button does is it just sends in a, a, a fake pulse to that circuit. And I use that to kind of set the clock because otherwise it would always be all zeros when it started. And then, but you kind of want to make sure the clock is set to the correct time. So if we take the first digit here, you can see it's up there on a zero at the top right now. But if I press, I can just go down the one that doesn't change on its own because time so this one is one of the this one is the hour digit you can see here zero one two three it's on the number four right now um and if i press this button here you will see that advances over there which means now it is on number five so we can see here go over here the clock should have advanced by uh, by one hour and indeed it has. It's now 1541 on the clock. So he has to just set simple buttons that just sends fake. The interesting part, of course, is how do you make this thing tick? And um, let me show you. Time. The first thing I want to show you is those blinking digits in the middle that just turns on and on. Because that's probably one of the simplest circuits you can build in No Man's Sky. What you need is you're going to need a power inverter. Now the power inverter, let's just take a lamp actually so that it's, uh, it's a little easier to see when stuff happens. The, uh, the output of the inverter and plug that into the cube. Now, normally, there we go. It will run right through and it will light up the cube. But of course, if we put power into the, to the signal port, it will do the opposite. So there will always be, the output here will always be the opposite of what is on the input. Now, if you wanna make this thing flash, all you really have to do is just to connect the output side, I'm just normally you could just connect it across like that, but just to make it clearer, I'm just gonna do like this. If you do that, you can see it turns on, and then when it's on, it means it turns itself off, and then it turns itself on, and it turns itself off. And that is the simplest clock pulse you can do. All circuits in No Man's Sky is updated at one hertz. That means every second it checks for an update. So you can see now, this is just merrily blinking, blinking away. And you will in fact see that that is the exact circuit I have right here. And that goes up and that drives those, like the dots in between the numbers. 
So this is actually completely isolated from the rest of the clock. And all it does is just sit and uh, and blinks, blink on and off. Now, you might have noticed this section here, this spinning clock. And that's the main clock pulse generator for, uh, for the clock. There are 10 here. That's because this one is used to drive the first part of the second digit. And they just run in a circle. Let me show you how you built this. And we're just going to make a very simple example over here. And for this, we're going to need normal auto switches. So these are just the opposite of the inverters. When power goes into the signal side, it lets power through. And what you're going to do is you're going to put these up. And I'm going to put these up in a circle. And you're going to have the power side or the signal side pointing backwards in your circle. So you can see how I'm turning them so that the little, like the foot of the T is always pointing backwards in my circle. Like so. First, of course, we're going to need some power and we're going to power them from inside out. We're going to let all the inner ones here. It's just going to be power and this is going to be permanent power always running. So the idea here is that, of course, each of them with a power on, they're going to go and they're going to send light, uh, send power out to, uh, to the lamps. And when one is on, it is going to send the signal to the next one in the line, like so. So when this one is on, power on the next one. When this one is on, power on the next one. This one is on, it's going to power on the next one. And with that, it's ready. The only thing we need is we need to have a pulse to initialize it because it can't start on its own. We kind of need to give it a little, give it a little kick. So we're gonna just place down a simple button, put some power in and just connect it to any of the outputs. So in this case, let's say I want to start at the top so we're going to connect it up to the outside of the top there. And now we can see when the, when this first one up here, when that one turns on, that light's got to go on. But there's nothing actually keeping it on, so it's going to turn off immediately as soon as the button is released. But there's going to be power that's going to keep this one on for one tick, so that's one second. And that's going to power the next one on for one second, and the next one on for one second. And it's just going to keep running in circles. So now that I power this on, you can see how it just sits and it jumps around in circles. And what I basically do is, that's exactly the same thing I do here. And it just sends, whenever I reach the top, whenever that digit rolls over, it sends a signal down a, a pulse wire. As you can see, this is my initialization, initialization pulse I can send from this one. And this one there, you saw it there, it turned blue for a second. That's my clock pulse. And that runs all the way down the clock. And then it runs into these circuits here that each of these are done uh, driving a, a single digit in the display. But each of these pulses basically means now the first digit is rolling over and only when that rolls over should could any of these change. Of course, they won't do it every time. They're all delayed a little bit so that they fit with an actual clock. Let me explain what all of this is. This is essentially just an output, an advanced output selector. So you can see here there are one, two, three, should be six six identical circles circuits here because well the number after the um after the first digit can have six different digits zero to five the next one here is ten you can see there's only five tall but there are two of them next to each other so these are ten circuits that are connected together again you have six you have ten and then finally you have the three over here because the last digit can only be a zero one or a two and that one there is just some special rollover handling because of course this one is gonna be, it's gonna be a 24 hour clock. So when it reaches 24, it should roll over back to zero. So that's a special handling for, for that there. But let me show you how these input output selectors are working. Now the base of them is essentially just a simple little switch here, an auto switch here. If we take the auto switch and we connect power into it, I just set a, a simple like manual switch here so we can turn it on and off when we need to. And what we need is we need to be able to send in the pulse with our button. And when the when the pulse comes in, it needs to turn the light on, but it needs to stay on even after the pulse is gone. And the way we do that is quite simply, we connect the output of our switch back into its own signal. And then we connect the output also to that. And now when we connect the switch like so, you can see here when I activate it, we get a pulse and the light stays on because now this circle circuit here is keeping itself alive. And that's the basis of these output selectors. But there's a problem. You can see here that the power is running back down to the switch. That's a problem because you can kind of imagine we have one switch that we use for the initialization pulse all the way down the line. So 
that means that this one will go up to all of the different circuits. We're going to build three of these in a minute. And because the power is running backwards down to the switch, that means they will also run up to uh, to the next one. So in order to avoid that, we are going to build, we're going to build a little input handler. And basically everything that goes into the, to the circuits here needs to go in through, um, through some of these, uh, these switches where the input is sitting to the signal side. So we're just going to put a single auto switch up there. We're going to connect some power into the auto switch. And then the signal can goes out here on the other side and goes down like before. And we need that one there. And now when we take this button here and we connect that up to the auto switch there, you can now see what happens when we click this button. It does the exact same thing, but most importantly, there is no power flowing back down to the switch and down through the, ne the next levels and messing up our circuits and turning stuff on that it shouldn't be turning on. Of course, we do not want these to just turn on every time its pulse is sent, right? We only need these to turn on when um when it is its turn in line so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that only if the previous one in the circuit there's gonna be multiple of these circuits but only if the previous circuit is turned on is this one allowed to turn on and we can do that very very simply by just uh deleting that wire there we're gonna put in another switch and then we're just gonna connect these up so this flows through this one and then they can throw into there um, and then we still have the pulse that comes in here. And then let's just imagine we have a, a switch. Let's imagine this is the previous circuit we get we are, we are hiding up here. So now you can see if we just go ahead and give this circuit a nice little reset here. Turn everything off. There we go. You can see here if the previous circuit, which is what we're simulating here, if is off, we can now send all the signals we want into the circuit. It's never going to be able to bypass that switch there. And it's never going to turn this one on. But when the previous one in the circuit is on, like so, the power can throw through and it will turn on. So now, with this, it will only turn on if the previous one is working. Now, we of course also need to be able to turn this thing off again. So we're just adding an inverter into a loop here. So that one goes into the inverter. And then this one goes up and back into itself, into the signal port there. And this one can then go over there. Now we can see if we again simulate the next one in line with another switch. If the previous circuit is on um, and the next circuit is off like so. So right now we're in the situation. The previous circuit is on, next circuit is on. And we send a pulse. Pulse is sent. Light turns on. At that point we then expect the previous one to turn off of course. And that's fine light still turns or stay on but as soon as the next one in line this next circuit turns on and is active boom this light goes out let me show you this by just repeating this whole setup here uh three more times so here we have the circuit three times as i said and what we want to do is is we want to make sure when the previous circuit is on then we can send signals into the next one so when previous is on signal into the next one and for this one here of course we have to kind of do a a loop around here and send that in off there like so and it's going to run all the way around because it needs to be in a circle so it starts over again and as i said in the in as, as before when the next one in line turns on we need to swap the, turn the previous one off so we're going to send the power into the previous one and this power here is then gonna run back down there okay now we have the circuit power is on but you can see just as with the other clock circle here we need to initialize it so we're just gonna put down a button let's put it out here in the grass we know it's different and and this button's job is to just start the circuit somewhere so let's say we just want to start the top one so we click this like so we should start the top circuit like so. And you can see after that pulse is gone, the top circuit stays on. And now every time I click this signal button, look at that. Next one in line turns on. And I click it again. Next one in line turns on and stays on. And it will stay on until I send another signal in. And that's how I control the numbers. So essentially for each number, you can see here, 
This one has six digits, six different numbers it can be. And there will be six of these circuits running in a circle. And whenever this one rolls over, you can see here in a second. There we go. Pulse sends in and it swaps over to the next one in line. And it's the same thing that happens here. But there is a problem that the keen eye of you may notice. There are only four like items here, whereas this one over here actually has five. It's an item missing. Why is that? Look at these uh, lights here when I click the... Um, when I click the uh, the button here, and most importantly, look at which order they turn on and off. So I click it, next one turns on, previous one off. That's no good because I want. That means that two numbers would for a second, just a second, but two numbers would be displayed at the same time. That's no good. So in order to do that, we're just gonna build a little extra test circuit out here to to show you something very very simple. Okay, so our goal here is quite simple, just to make a circuit that delays the, the, the signal or delays the power by one second. Okay, so I just built three here to make it a little bit clearer what's going on, to make it easier to see the effect. And basically what we want is we want each of these to delay the signal by one second. So we're going to send power in and power should run through like so, all the way up to the light. But the way we kind of delay it is we take its own input and use it to turn it on. Own imp oops own input to turn itself on and own input to turn on okay so with this simple setup here if i power this one off you should now see that it turns on one at a time and it kind of runs delays the signal down the line see click 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 and there it is finally on so we can use stuff like these very, very simple ones to just add delays now we added three circuit delays here now how do we do that well we do that very simply by First of all, just removing all the wires that goes into the lamps, like so. And then we're just going to add that single second delay circuit by adding a simple switch, like so. And all it really needs to do is the power needs to go into the circuit, turn itself on before it moves on to the next one. So do the same thing here, into the circuit, turn itself on, move on to the next one. If I build this correctly, I should be able to press the button and the next one in line should turn on at the same time as the next, as the previous one turns itself off. Let's see if this works. Press the button. And there we go. The switch happened at the same tick. Let's try that again. Click. Same tick again. Perfect. And that is exactly the behavior that I want. Though this doesn't really have any practical purposes because, of course, as soon as you leave the base or as soon as you log out, the clock is not running. It saves the state where the clock was at, so you can, if you want to, you can kind of use it as a as a timer to keep track of, of how much time you spend in your base. Maybe if you want a timer for that, it can do that. That's up to you, I guess. Now, I had a ton of fun building this clock, and I already have ideas for the next um, for the next thing I want to build. Uh, spoiler, it's going to be a game. Like a two-player multiplayer game that you can sit, you can invite other other travelers to come in here and we can play games against each other. That's my, uh, that's the next thing I want to build, but probably going to showcase that for you in a future video. So if you want to see that, subscribe button is right below. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.